I'm Matt Newson, and welcome to day one of the UK Open weekend. It certainly is UK Open weekend for the Brisker Formula One stock cars here at Skegness Raceway in Lincolnshire, and around 50 cars are here for the Brisker Formula One's going for one of their top titles of the season. This is day one on Saturday evening here at Skegness. Two heats and a consolation for the Brisker F1s in the first part of our programme. We've also got action from the Brisker Formula 2s and the F1s racing from the Andrew Batty Memorial in their meeting final. We kick off in the sunshine of Lincolnshire with heat number one. 22 cars on track for this one. The top 12 will go through to the meeting final. Sam Wass and Scott Wright lead the white graders away. Lower scorers from previous meetings. And we've got the yellows, blues, reds and superstars. Names to uh, look out for in this one further back on the grid include the man we just heard from, Matt Newson. Dan Johnson's out there as well in uh, number four. Phoebe Wayneman leading the uh, family challenge along with uh, Frankie Wayneman Jr. Jr. A.K.A. Little Ted as he's known to his family. Also this man, Lee Fairhurst in 217. We've not seen too much of Lee so far in 2019 in front of our cameras so we'll see how he gets on here this is the venue of course where he won his world title back in 2012 this will be a 16 lap race 12 qualifiers for the meeting final we are underway notice many of the cars have their bumpers painted orange in memory of longtime stock car fan Andrew Batty who recently lost his battle with cancer tonight's meeting being run in his memory Lee Fairhurst getting the bumper in there on Dan Johnson a tangle on the outside Ben Riley in 4-2-2 was one car involved there. Dutchman Rick Lenson in H318 was the other. So it's Sam Wass with a clear lead in the early stages here in 284 ahead of Yellow Grader. Tristan Jackson in 101. Shane Geary, the North Ants driver in 478, is in third. The race starts to settle in. There's Finn Sargent in uh, 526. Danny Wayman blasts past our camera car of Chris Cowley, gets some bump perimeter and fires him into the back of the number 120 car there. That's Casey Inglestone. Mini stocks and salute stock car racer. 415 Russell Cooper goes three wide with Sargent and with the 278 of uh, Paul Hopkins in there. Matt Newson under fire from Lee Fairhurst. Makes him out wide. The stock uh, cars there of Lenson and Riley on the outside out of the race. Leaders able to get through on the inside. Marshall on the inside. The turn signaling drivers to pass on the inside. And in goes Joe Nichols there in 242. More cars pile in behind them. There's about four or five cars in there. We'll try and identify those in a moment as Chris Cowley gets the bumper in on Phoebe Waveman in 2.11. Plenty of early action incidents on the uh, Skegness Raceway tarmac. The raceway greatly improved in its uh, facilities since the uh, legendary stock car driver Rob Speak took over as promoter. Shane Geary stuck in that pile up on the outside of turn two there among others. A change for the lead. 101. Tristan Jackson, tarmac specialist, takes over from Sam Wass in 284. Didn't take him long to reel him in. Who else have we got in that pile up up there? Ben Riley, I can see. He was uh, one of the first cars in when he tangled with Rick Linson. 526 of uh, Finn Sargent. We've seen have quite a few successes this season along with his dad, Mark. Gets past the 275 of Terry Hawkins. Don't forget 12 cars to qualify for the meeting final. We're on board with Lee Fairhurst. In goes the bumper on the back of the treble five of Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. He gains another place across the Skegness tarmac as he proved when he won the world final here from the back of the grid in 2012. Matt Newson makes up another place in number 16. Great to have uh, him back racing after his early season illness. 401 there, Mark Wackerwareham, veteran campaigner in the uh, yellow graded car, Been racing in heritage stock cars in recent years. Uh, Danny Wayman in 2 1 2 gets some bumper now from Lee Fairhurst. We've not seen too much of Danny so far this year either. Plenty of action all the way down the order. Then we're coming into the closing stage. It looks like it is going to be a win for number 101 of Tristan Jackson. We've seen him do most of his winning at Birmingham over the years as Mark Wareham has had a spin there in 4 1. He may have to go in the consolation events. Fairhurst continuing to put the bumper in on all and sundry. Bradley Harrison in 25 takes a hit from the 217 car. He's been doing plenty of uh, promotion uh, for Brisker F1 in his hometown of Bolton in uh, Lancashire over recent months. Had his car on display at a number of events. Towards the end then of heat number one for the Brisker Formula One stock cars. It'll be last lap this time for race leader Tristan Jackson. The higher graders 
seemingly content to battle with each other in this one. The leader comes up to lap Russell Cooper in 4.15. It is going to be a win for number 101, Tristan Jackson. Comes up to lap Carl Whiteman in 3.03. Round the final turn. At 101, Tristan Jackson takes the chequered flag. A comfortable win for the yellow grader. Confirm the rest of the placings in a few moments' time. Looks like it was Sam Wass who took second there in 2.84 see who has placed elsewhere in that first race of the day here at Sunny Skegness, just inland from the famous holiday resort here. Many fans making a full weekend of it, a huge crowd in attendance here at Skegness. Result confirmed that as a win for Tristan Jackson, over two seconds clear of Sam Wass, Sean Webster and George Elwell, Blue Graders third and fourth, it was Chris Cowley ahead of Fairhurst. Harrison, Danny Wayman, Dan Johnson had a quiet race. Matt Newsom rounding out the top ten. Frankie Wayman, Junior Junior and Finn Sargent, the other qualifiers for the final. 101, Tristan Jackson, heat one winner and a good way to start the weekend. Yeah, the car was on rails, to be fair. Can't fault it, so it's good. And you're known for your tarmac racing. You've got a shale car this year as well, but your form on tarmac is really good. Yeah, it was all right. We're struggling with the shale car at the minute, but we'll get there, I think. But... And we can see you're having a well-earned brew now before the final as well. Yeah. Well, best of luck. Cheers. The other half of the entry out on track now for heats at number two. Dave Dorans in 3.66 and 1.80 of Courtney Witts lead them off. Good to see her back racing. The defending UK Open champion is out in this one. 4.45, Nigel Green. Also the national points champion, Frankie Wayman Jr. in 5.15. Also out there we've got the new car of 197, Ryan Harrison making uh, his debut with that car. New tarmac car for number 84, the European champion Tom Harris as well, starting alongside Nigel Green. Courtney Wicks looks like she's going to take the lead around the outside as they come round towards the green flag. 23 cars on track for 16 laps. Away they go for heat number two. Another 12 qualifiers to be sorted out for the final. And Ryan Harrison's uh, new car hasn't got far. He's had a spin already, number 197. We're on board with Tom Harris. Great shot here from the front bumper of uh, his new car, getting the bumper in on uh, Junior Weyman, but I think he's got a problem there, Tom Harris. He's dropped back. Paul Hines attacking in 259 there on the back of Luke Davidson in 464. Nearly won the uh, UK Open title last year. Tom Harris pulling off. He has indeed got a problem. It's 180. Courtney Wicks, who leads the way. First meeting for around 18 months in uh, Chris Gref 1. And a tangle there. Adam Bamford goes off along with uh, a couple of others there into the wall. 259. Paul Hines gets taken in. Tangles with uh, Luke Davidson. That's their second con confrontation of this race. So plenty of hard hits already going in on turns one and two up there. 445 Nigel Green defending the UK Open title this weekend. The caution flag is coming out though. Yellow flags out for those cars off on turn two, I think. Race is brought under the yellow flags. The cars form up single file ready for the restart. Where's the tangle? Adam Bamford with Kyle Gray in 124 and Sam Jacklin in 137 went crashing in on the outside. We also saw Paul Hines and Luke Davidson go in just a little further round the turn and it was for that reason we had the yellow flags come out. Courtney Witts the leader ahead of Dave Dorans in 3.66 in the MJS recovery car. Callum Oaks Kitson at the 5.33 is third. Then we've got Alex Wass in 2.83, the brother of Sam Wass who we saw in uh, race one. Ashley England there in 3.46, the Blue Raider, tarmac specialist. Carl Hawkins in 1.75 and further back as well so we get back underway. Beat number one with Courtney Witts in the lead on board with Nigel Green as a few cars get scattered out wide there at the start of that one Green attacks Junior Wayman in 5-1-5 Hawkins in 175 just ahead they start to battle with each other and are they going to catch the lower graders here in this one Courtney Wicks with a clear lead at the moment Alex Wass going for second place in car 283 re-ride on board with yellow grader Aaron Leach in number 70 ahead of us is Callum Oaks kids in that beautifully livery number 533 car from some stunning artwork on that machine. His father, Daz Kitson, a former F2 world champion. We'll see the Brisker F2s out later on. Dave Dorans has been taken wide. He's lost second place. Looks like Charlie Sorder in number five has come through there. The son of Mick Sorder, of course, number 150. Nigel Green side by side with Aaron Leach. Charlie Sorder gets sent wide now. So does Aaron Leach further back by Carl Hawkins in the 175. Paul Harrison in number two, father of Bradley, the 2011 world champion, 
is uh, in that group as well. And Brian Harrison recovering from his uh, spin at the start of the race. Aaron Leach is on his tail. Carl Hawkins has been bumped and wide in 175. So a little bit livelier than we saw in heat number one. And Hawkins spins out. The bumper's gone in on Aaron Leach. Didn't see who from there. Somebody else has spun out there. That's the 346 of Ashley England. He's tangled with Charlie Sorda, who rejoins. The Union flag has just gone out for halfway, and Courtney Wintz is still leading by a very handsome margin in the number 180 car. Passing the spun car of Scotsman John Fortune there, number 164. Courtney Wintz is the daughter of uh, Ray Wintz, very successful V8 stock car and an F1 stock car racer. Courtney's younger brother Jack is currently uh, winning titles by the handful in the national mini stocks as well. Courtney herself, former British and uh, gold top champion in the minis. Interested one time from uh, a couple of circuit racing teams as well. She's had uh, trials on simulators for circuit race teams. Maybe a change of career in the offing one day. Certainly showing the uh, regulars the way here in this heat number two for the Brisker Formula One stock cars. Dave Dorrance has been lapped there in 366. Let's have a look back at uh, second place. Ashley England's a lap down as well. It's Junior Wayman second now ahead of Nigel Green. Then we've got Murray Jones in 196. The Saloon Stock Car and Super Stock Star. They're not going to catch Courtney Wintz here. This is very impressive from one of the leading ladies of UK Oval Racing. Great to see her back in the F1s. Maybe we'll see her make more regular appearances along with the likes of Phoebe Wayman and Jacqueline Ellis, the leading ladies of Brisker F1 over the last few years. 5 Junior Wayman holding off Nigel Green for second place. They lap Ashley England in 3-4-6. We saw him spin earlier on. But it's going to be a flag-to-flag -flag win by the look of things for the 180 of Courtney Wicks. She heads into the final turn. Very impressive drive indeed. Nigel Green attacking for second on the final turn at the inside. Will he take Junior Wayman for second place? The drag race to the line. Wayman holds on. But it is a win for Courtney Wicks in 180. Attempts a donut in celebration there. Well, half a donut there as she slides onto the centre. Didn't quite make the full 360. She's happy. Excellent race victory there for Courtney Wintz on her return after nearly 18 months away from Brisker Formula One. Great to have young Courtney back. He takes the win by nearly three seconds ahead of Junior Wayman, who just out dragged Nigel Green to the line. Paul Harrison taking fourth ahead of Murray Jones, then Mickey Randall in 172, Aaron Leach in seventh ahead of 484 of Craig Utley, Carl Hawkins and Martin Spurriers rounding out the top ten, Callum Oaks, Kitson and Ashley England, the other two qualifiers for the meeting final. 180, Courtney Wits, heat two winner here today and on the pace. Yeah, it was a great race. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to be honest. After 18 months out the seat, I definitely wasn't expecting a win, but we'll take it. Yeah, last time we saw you on the television screens, it was the gala night, and you, you got a win then as well. Yeah, I mean, like last time I was out, I got a win, but like that was a long time ago, and I thought I'd be so rusty, but like to be fair, I couldn't thank the Davidsons enough. Like they, they took me practicing this week, and like made me remember what to do, <laughs> and then like. I've just been working through the day today in practice and stuff and the car was mint then. To, to be fair, like in practice it wasn't feeling great but like I couldn't fault the car in that race. It did everything I wanted it to do, so it was great. And I was just praying that there'd be no more yellow flags and there wasn't, so I was in luck. <laughs> and if everything goes your way and on that pace, you could be a dark horse for the championship tomorrow as well. Yeah, hopefully. I mean I'll be trying. I mean you can't you can't go racing and not aim to win. I mean that's ev what everyone's aiming to do, so um We'll just keep working on the car, seeing it, if we can get it better and better each race. And like, I just need to like improve my confidence as well. And like, I was lucky to get away in that one. I mean, I need to get better at dealing with traffic and things like that. So, and I'd imagine in the championship race, like tomorrow's, it will definitely be uh, lots of traffic. <laughs> well, best of luck. Well, I'm sure we'll be speaking again soon. Thank you, and I hope so. <laughs> Time for the consolation race then. These are the drivers that didn't make it into the top 12 in their heats. Another 10 places up for grabs in the meeting final. There are another 23 cars out on track for this one. Another 16 laps coming your way. Looking for the drivers who uh, didn't make it through from the uh, heats. Notable names including Tom Harris, of course, who pulled up with uh, car problems. Ryan Harrison's new car is out there as well. They're the main players to watch from the back of the field. Ben Riley in 422 involved in an early tangle with Rick Lenson, the Dutchman. He's on the grid as well. Luke Davidson in 464. He tangled with Paul Hines, who uh, hasn't made it back out, I don't think, for this one in 259. 
Phoebe Wade, but he's out there in 211, 278 to Paul Hopkins as well. But it's Dave Dorans in 366 who leads them away. Ahead of Sam Jacklin in 137. Bit of a slow start for 303, Carl Whiteman from the outside of the front row. They're all away cleanly though. We go on board with Tom Harris in car number 84 on bumper cap, chasing after 422 of Ben Riley. He nearly does exactly the same there with uh, Rick Lenson as he did in heat one, but they avoid each other this time. Tom Harris leaps through on the inside in car 84, the European champion. There's that new car of 197. Ryan Harris, a superb looking beast, that one. Bit of bumping and boring there in the midfield. Luke Davidson involved in 464. It's Dave Dorans, the early leader in car 366. Russell Cooper gets sent out wide there in car 415 and a bit of a wallop in the background there. A couple of cars went off. I think one of them might have been Casey Engelston in number 120. Couldn't quite see who the other one was. But I'll pick up on that in a moment because Tom Harris is right in the thick of things in the midfield. We're with him. Makes up about three places in one turn there. Coming up on Scott Wright in car number 254. There is Dave Dorans in 366. He throws bangers, rebels, V8 stock cars and now giving the F1s a go for his first F1 win here in this Constellation event. Fairly well struck out around the raceway now. All those couple of cars stranded up on turn one. Sunsets here at Skegness, but the caution flags are coming out for those stranded cars. I think one of them, yes, one of them is Casey Engelston. Another one is Scott Wright in 254. And the third car, the green car there in the background, is Carl Whiteman. We'll see what happened to uh, those three. Engelston got tangled up with the 303 of Carl Whiteman, slid out into the wall. Perhaps they spotted the burger van in the background there. And he gets stuck against the wall and I think uh, Scott Wright ended up, yes, walloping straight into the back of uh, the 120 of Casey Engelston. So that was the reason for the yellow flag, just to check the drivers were okay. That was quite a hit for Casey, whose dad uh, John Engelstern we've seen out in the F1s in the past, the ex-saloon stock car and banger racer. Ready for the restart then, it is Dave Dorans ahead of Kyle Gray in 124. Dave wouldn't have uh, wanted to see those yellow flags come out, he had quite a lead built up over the rest of the pack and Kyle Gray has been able to get the bumper straight in there into turn one, through he goes into the lead. The yellow grader takes up the lead then, a brilliant uh, debut season Kyle Gray had last year, some calling him the new sensation of Brisker F1. Certainly proving that at the moment here. There's the battle between Luke Davidson, Tom Harris, Charlie Sorder, and uh, Joe Nichols in 242 is in there. Almost three wide. They are three wide as they go down the straight there. Davidson makes up a couple of places in the 464. Kyle Gray leads it from Dorans. It's Alex Wass in third. This battle is now for fourth place as the Union flag goes out for halfway. Davidson under fire from Tom Harris, making up for car problems in his heats. Kyle Gray still with the lead in number 124, son of former racer Mark Gray. 242 car in the fence there, Joe Nichols, and the yellow flag does come out. So the yellow is out again. Kyle Gray prevented from getting away. We'll see what's happened there to 242 Joe Nichols. I think he had Adam Bamford stuffed into him by uh, John Fortune there and walloped straight in backwards when the 242 car. Yellow is out just to check on the uh, slightly shaken young gun in 242. He's out of the race. Oh, Gray certainly isn't, though. He's got the lead. Head of Dave Dorans. Tom Harris snap to fourth and ready to attack. He's got ahead of Luke Davidson. And we've got the wild child, as it says on his wing, Charlie Sorder in number five. He's proved at a few show events he's had that uh, car on display. He's very good at doing donuts, is Charlie Sorder. So we might we'll maybe see that if he were to win here. Away they go, then a slow restart for Dave Dorans. He drops back in 366 with a possible problem. Kyle Gray gets away into the lead, driving an ex-Tom Harris car, if memory serves me right. And its former owner is now up in the second place, ahead of Alex Wass and Luke Davidson. And we've got Sorda, and then a small gap back to the rest of the pack, headed by Rick Ledson, our Dutch visitor in H318. H for Holland, of course. Tom Harris trying to close on race leader, teenager Kyle Gray. Goes the bumper for 464. Luke Davidson trying to attack Alex Wass for third position, the yellow grader. Then Sorda, then Lenson, they've broken away from the rest of the field now. Luke Davidson nibbling at the back bumper there of Alex Wass now gets it wide into 83, side by side, down the straight. The platforms are out from the start, Marshall. Davidson goes up into third place. It's 
group of cars headed by the 422 of Ben Riley ahead of Paul Hopkins and the rest of them. Come through there on the inside is Adam Bamford. He's having a good season so far, but John Fortune picks him up on Wallop. Straight in they go. That's broken the steering on Adam Bamford's car. He's out of the race. Commentator's curse there for Adam. Snyder said he was having a good season so far. He got Wallop straight in. Sorry, Adam. Meantime, Tom Harris has caught Kyle Gray. Are we going to see a last bend lunge here for the lead? Coming around to start the final lap now. Harris is poised to attack. He's going to go up the inside coming out of turn four. He may not wait till the last bend. He's going for the inside. They're almost side by side in two turns, one and two. Harris is going through. He's got the gap. He goes through. It's going to be a win for the number 84. Tom, the hitman Harris, out of the final turn, takes the consolation win. Second for Kyle Gray. Third place will go to Luke Davidson, Alex Was, Charlie Sorder, Rick Lenson, and the rest of them. Adam Bamford got going again there after that impact of the fence. That's quite impressive to drag the car home. I don't think he's made the top ten. We'll check that in a moment to see who is going through to the meeting final. Don't forget, only ten from the consolation, not the top twelve. We know the winner, number 84, Tom Harris, making up for breaking down early in his heat. The European champion takes the win by eight tenths of a second ahead of Kyle Gray. Luke Davidson third ahead of Alex Wass and Charlie Sorda. Dutchman Rick Lenson a good sixth ahead of Ben Riley. Phoebe Wayman, Paul Hopkins and Russell Cooper meeting the top ten. They go through to the meeting final. Adam Bamford not quite making it. He dragged his car home for a ticket. 84, Tom Harris, consolation winner and first win in the new tarmac car. Yeah, it's about time, isn't it? It's, uh, it's taken a lot longer to get going than what I'd hoped, but we're getting there slowly. Um, you know, it's the only way to sort of like get an advantage, you know, to do something different. So uh, that's what we've done, and you're taking baby steps. We need to be taking big steps, but unfortunately we're not. But yeah, we're, we're getting there with it, and we'll uh, we'll be there with our other abouts. Yeah, all, all new cars take time to get development. They always say once you've bent it, it goes faster. And you've been trying that recently in the last few weeks, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. It got bent at uh, Birmingham, and it's a different car again today. So. I'd like to thank Dan because he should have done it from out of the box, but um, yeah, hopefully we can sort the steering out now, it'll, uh, it'll be alright. Well, best of luck. Thank you very much, cheers. The sun is setting, but the action heating up here at Skegness Raceway on this Saturday night. More stock car action coming up in a few moments' time. We've got the finals and Grand Nationals for the Brisker Formula 1s and the Formula 2s as well. Coming up after this short break, don't go away more in a moment. Welcome back to Skegness Raceway here on Brisker Formula One Stock Cars UK Open Weekend. It's now time to go into the finals of this Saturday night, day one of this two-day meeting. And we're first going to look at the Brisker Formula Two Stock Cars. Big entry of them here this evening. Almost 30 cars out there for the meeting final. And car 183 at the back of the white tops is the man who everyone's eyes will be on. That's former National Mini Stocks gold top. Charlie Ginchard. He won two of the three heats earlier on. The other one by number 25, Stuart Hodgson, the yellow grader. Will Charlie Ginchard score a hat trick? We've got quite a few Dutch drivers in this race, plus one or two from Northern Ireland. World champions out there as well with the gold aerofoil at the back there. Number seven, Gordon Moody. Two times a world champion now. Plenty of other big names out there, including former world champion. Kelvin Marshall in 101, 142. Jonathan Hadfield, regular circuit racer in Ginetta Sports Cars, is out there somewhere as well. We get underway then, 20 laps for the Brisker Formula 2s here at Skegness Raceway. Bart Smets, the UK based Dutchman in 969, leads the way. 283 Gary Allen gets sent out wide. Another of the yellow graders spinning behind him. Very busy pack of nearly 30 F2s out there. Henry King in 78 gets sent wide. 482 Dale Seneschal was leading, but Charlie Ginchard, not surprisingly, has already burst through into the lead, and we're only on the second lap. So the second is the number 702 car of Will Thompson. Gordon Moody's already carved his way through several of the higher graders there. There's John Hadfield, number 142, we mentioned, side by side with Julian Coombs, the Cornish driver in the green 828 car. This midfield group led by number four of Martin Ford, one of several members of the Ford family who've raced F2s over the years. Gordon Moody's in there as well, ahead of 359 of uh, Gary Wrench. He gets some bumper from Tommy Farrell from the West Country in number 667. Drivers from all over the UK, Northern Ireland and uh, the Netherlands here this evening in the Formula 2s. Always a huge entry in Skegness. A big tangle there between Julian Coombs and I think that's Gary Wrench facing the wrong way. Sparks flying from the back of Coombs' car. He's damaged his suspension. It's 183, Charlie Ginchard setting the pace up front as 
wrench tries to wrench the car back facing the right way and the background there at turn three and four there's Northern Ireland's Bradley McKinstry in the 747 car being chased by Aaron Vate in 184 Tommy Farrell's in there and 78 X Legends cars racer Henry King Lostdale Seneschal in 482 he's in the fence on turn four only a couple of cars have gone out so far and that battle of the blue graders has uh, blown up there Tommy Farrell goes into the wall Henry King left facing the wrong way he rejoins just behind leader Charlie Ginchard at 101 Kelvin Marshall pulling off the former world champion won his world title on the tarmac at Hensford Raceway we go there fairly soon next month in fact for the Brisker F1 British Championships Ginchard now coming into lap 618 of Ben Lockwood Bears number 25 Stuart Hodson, he had a heat win earlier on in the, the car known as the Purple People Eater. Being chased by 251 of Craig Driscoll. H154 there, that is Kay Lenson. A few members of the Lenson family racing here this weekend, getting some bumper from David Shearing in 564. Now he was uh, a white top at the start of this season, only just out of mini stocks and uh, a very successful Brisker F2 career on the tarmac in particular so far. Still Charlie Ginchard though leads at halfway. Behind him is another Dutchman, H202, that's Art Jan van Dam. 618 Ben Lockwood, the man from Manchester, about to be lapped there as well. And Gary Allen in 283, they almost have a coming together there as Ginchard gets through. Four wide into turn one and van Dam spins out in 202. Nobody else has spun there, the 190 car of Ben Germany. 183 Ginchard, former gold top in the national mini stocks along with many, many other titles in his mini days. Mark Ginchard and himself a former racer just about all the Ginchards have raced stock cars over the years including on the circuits as well we've seen a couple of uh, Ginchards in karting and single seaters over the years Aaron Bates chasing David Shearing behind them Martin Ford in the number 4 the Daglo yellow car getting some bumper there from uh, one of the red tops couldn't see who the uh, smaller aerofoils that F2s tend to use on target these days making it a little bit more difficult to read the numbers Van Damme with a lot of smoke there. He's a lap down as uh, Ginchard continues to dominate. He's heading for a hat-trick of wins on this Saturday night here at Skegness Raceway. Looking to enter Brisker F1 in uh, a year or two's time. So gaining his uh, ground in F2s at the moment. Van Damme continues to smoke in the 202 car, but he's keeping it going. And there's not been many retirements in uh, this F2 final. King getting some bumper in on uh, the 251 of Craig Driscoll there. Bradley McKinstry, the Northern Irishman, up behind them in 747 and 184 Aaron Bates. You know, pushing and shoving, Driscoll goes wide. Just a couple of laps to go now for Ginchard. He's not taking any risks here. He's not attacking the back markers. He knows he's well ahead of his opposition. The only car able to stay within the 560 car there of Luke Wrench. Gained a bit of ground there as we go into the final lap. I don't think he's going to catch Charlie Ginchard though. We'll take something special from Luke Wrench from here. There's a back marker in between the two of them, and Ginchard is going to hang on. It's going to be a hat trick for white grader Charlie Ginchard. He won't be a white grader for very long. Luke Wrench comes over in second, and Gordon Moody back in third, I think, there. It was a quiet race for the world champion there. Couldn't stay with the leaders. I'll confirm the rest of the results in a few moments' time. Charlie Ginchard has totally dominated the F2s here at Skegness on this Saturday evening with a hat-trick of victory. Ginchard, the winner, four-tenths of a second ahead of Luke Wrench. Gordon Moody, third, ahead of earlier heat winner Stuart Hodson. Kay Lenson, the Dutchman, in fifth place, ahead of Bradley McKinsey for Northern Ireland. And Aaron Bates, David Shearing, Martin Ford and Craig Driscoll rounding out the top ten. Most famous words in motorsport herald the Chevrolet V8 engines into life for what is a very special race for stock car drivers and fans. The Andrew Batty Memorial Final for the Brisker Formula One stock cars under the Skegness floodlights. Andrew Batty, a long time stock car supporter, very enthusiastic fan indeed. He very sadly lost his battle with cancer earlier this season. This race being run in his memory. Courtney Witts and Callum Oaks Kitson will lead the field of 35 cars away. Two more cars just 
Costa dropping into line. Saw the qualifiers earlier on. This is going to be a rather emotional race, I would guess. Courtney Whitson, uh, Tristan Jackson, the heat winners, Tom Harris took the consolation. They're all aiming for doubles. Well, we see a new winner. Finn Sargent just needing a push start there from the Blue Graders. Very coveted uh, trophy, the Andrew Batty Memorial Trophy. These drivers to race for B. Fairhurst, Dan Johnson, Junior Wayman further back on the grid, Tom Harris at the back in car 84. It'll be a 20 lap race. They're on board with Dan Johnson in car number four as they're about to get underway then with the meeting final under the floodlights on this Saturday night. Andrew Batty, this one's for you, mate. Away they go. Courtney Wicks will lead them off in uh, car number 180, ahead of Sam Wass in 284. Callum Oaks Kitson in third. First in the yellows is Russell Cooper in 415. Looks like they're all going to make it round the first turn OK. Bumpers starting to go in among the yellow and blue tops already. Being taken by there, Martin Spires in the 451. He tackles with Charlie Sorda almost there in number five. We're on board with Nigel Green in 445, attacking Tom Harris in the 84, tries to put him into the back of Charlie Sorda's slowing car. Green sideways up the inside there, sends somebody else out into the wall. That was one of the blue graders. He settles down again. I think it was Phoebe Wayman who hit the wall there down the straights. Martin Spires stranded there on the exit of turn four. Tom Harris under fire. There's a tangle there down the uh, straights between Paul Hopkins and somebody else trying to hitch a ride. Who was that? That was uh, Rick Lenson, the Dutchman in 318. Lost Matt Newson in uh, number 16. Courtney Wicks, meanwhile, continues to lead the way. Chased by Sam Wass in uh, 284 on this very busy track. She's already encountering traffic. Paul Hopkins gets spun out by Sam Wass. Russell Cooper in third. Under fire from Alex Wass in 283. The two brothers running well here in the leading places. So the early hints have settled down now into this fast-paced final. The car seeming to almost go faster under the Skegness. Moments. Dan Johnson under fire there, very busy among the Reds and superstars. We go on board with Tom Harris in car 84 attacking. I think that's Paul Harrison in car number two. Makes up a couple of places down the home straight. You really get the sensation of speed from this uh, bumper camp. Down the straight goes Tom Harris, ready to attack the next group of cars ahead of him. He's got Junior Wayman and Nigel Green. They've been slugging it out all night in his wake. Junior Wayman sent wide there down the home straight. There's Dan Johnson in car number four. Tom Harris trying to catch him. There's been a bit of a rivalry between those drivers of late, but I think the yellow flags have come out. Indeed, they have. Courtney Witt still the leader. I think the problem may well have been Martin Spires in the 451. We've seen him stranded on turn four. He got uh, shuffled into the wall early on in this race, sat there for a few laps, and the uh, yellow's coming out just to uh, possibly remove his car. Ready for the uh, restart then, we're on lap 9 of the 20, Courtney Wicks' lead has been reduced down to nothing, it's Kyle Gray right behind her, similar situation to the consolation where Gray was on the tail of Dave Dorrant for the restart, is he ready to uh, put the bumper in here into the first turn, he doesn't quite manage it this time. To third is Tristan Jackson, our heat one winner in 101. Then it's Alex Was. Kyle oh, Gray now ready to attack Courtney Wicks for the lead around turn three and four. Has a look on the inside as they come up over the line. Is he going to go through? Yes, he is. Kyle Gray takes the lead of the Andrew Batty Memorial Trophy final. Tom Harris trying to make it four wide back in the pack a little further. His next target is Chris Cowley. Tom Harris just gained three places in one turn. He is really firing them in here. He goes for the inside on Cowley. He goes for the inside on Dan Johnson as well. Oh, he's been clouted from the inside. And round goes Harris. All his good work is undone. And Harris left facing the wrong way. That's how quickly it can happen in Brisker Formula One stock car racing. And actually England's about to find out here. He nearly gets pincered by Cowley and uh, Bradley Harrison there. He's now been sent wide by Mickey Randall. Spins out. Goodness me. The yellow flag has certainly bunched up the field and uh, made things a lot more lively. Meanwhile, 1-2-4 of uh, Kyle Gray. We have Tom Harris behind him in the closing laps of the consolation and took the win off him. Now he's about to lap his car's former owner. After that spin down the straight there where Harris got to sent across the track and spinning into the wall. Again, too many cars in too small a space. 2-1-2 there, Danny Wayman under fire from George Elwell, had a quiet run to uh, fourth place in his heat, the Blue Raider. Attacking Danny Wayman, the former under 25 champion, Dan Johnson ahead of him in the number four. He's all the way down the midfield, the front it is still 
124. Kyle Gray, there he is. And Christian Jackson in the 101. Looking further back to see who's in third. I think it's still Courtney Wittens in the 180. And we're going to have a top three of yellow and white graders here. There's Lee Fairhurst. He's had a quiet night as well. It has been a fairly uh, subdued evening for the higher graders in some cases. Maybe they're just keeping their powder dry ahead of the UK Open tomorrow. Treating this is a bit of a warm-up meeting. Oh, we've lost Danny Wayman. He's pulled up in 2-1-2. Out of the race on the exit of Turn 2 there. And just a couple of laps to go now for Kyle Gray, the teenager in number 124. He wins under fire from Nigel Green. Fairhurst up there as well. We have a change there for the uh, final podium spot. No wins is still in there in the 180 car. Just a couple of laps left now in this uh, final for the Brisk Ref. One's and a tangle there. 175, Carl Hawkins rides over the top of Mickey Randall. There's a wheel off there. Now, is the race going to be stopped? It doesn't look like it at the moment. They are into the final lap, so they'll complete the race. Kyle Gray is heading for victory in the 124 car. Round turns three and four for the final time. Gray is coming in to win. Nigel Green, meanwhile, is up into third place. And uh, Alex Wass goes into the pilot there, knocks Carl Hawkins' car flying. Meantime, Kyle Gray has taken the win. Uh, I'm a little surprised the race wasn't stopped there with uh, two laps to go because of that loose wheel from the tangle between Hawkins and uh, Randall. And then uh, this happened. Alex Wass helps Carl Hawkins off the bonnet of Mickey Randall. Saves the tractor drivers a job, I suppose. They still need to recover those two cars. Randall with the wheel missing. Fireworks at the end of the race in memory of uh, Andrew Batty sadly lost member of the stock car community. Check out the results of that one then. Kyle Gray taking the win ahead of Tristan Jackson with Nigel Green taking third on the final lap ahead of Lee Fairhurst. Courtney Ricks. Frankie Wayman Jr. in sixth ahead of Aaron Leach then Paul Harrison, Alex Plus and Finn Sargent rounding out the top ten finishers in the inaugural Andrew Batty Memorial. One, two, four, Kyle Gray final winner. Oh, can't believe it. This time, well not this time Last year, managed to get a final win here, and I just this year we've just had bad luck after bad luck, and obviously it's finally come my way again. So yeah, and it was a special final as well. It was in memory of Andrew Batty, and there was a big prize fund on it, but the money's not what mattered in that. Money doesn't matter at all. It's just the pure fact that I won it, and I wanted to. The next race I won, well, even if I ever did win one, it was I was going to dedicate it to him anyway, and it couldn't have been a better race to dedicate it to him because he's one kind gentleman. It's just sad to see him go. And it was a hard, fast race as well. It wasn't an easy win. You had to work hard for that. It's like in the consolation, it was yellow flags after yellow flags, and then in the final, I saw the yellow flags come out again, and I was like, say, same again. But no, finally pulled through and um, managed to take the win. And then don't touch your setup. Leave it ready for tomorrow, of course. Oh, God, too right. Leave that as, as it is. Put it in the bus, out the way, out of, out of sight. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we're back with the uh, Formula 2 boys their Grand National, so the final winner Charlie Ginchard starts from the one lap handicap in front of the in front of his fellow white tops I should say, and he might grade himself very impressive with three wins out of three on this Saturday night this will be a 16 lap race, around 20 cars out there on track Gordon Moody's out there, the world champion, number of uh, star graders as well, Bradley McKinstry for Northern Ireland, Kay Linson and uh, Art Jan van Dam from the Netherlands UK-based Dutchman Bart Schmetz in 969 is out there in his Team Mitchell built cup. Ginchard starting just ahead of him. He's got the one-lap handicap to make up. And he complete a final and Grand National double and complete a perfect score of all four race wins. It's uh, rare to see, especially on tarmac, a final and Grand National double. Bart Schmetz leads the round. He's got the 130 car of Emma Ford, one of the leading ladies of Brisker F2 alongside and away they go 16 laps of risk to action Gordon Moody wasting no time in the attack on Kay Lenson in H154 all into the first turn okay Tommy Farrell under fire there from the 564 I think that is of uh, David Shearing no, it wasn't, sorry it was the 527 of James Rigor apologies there it's 969 of Bart Smith who's got the early lead ahead of 702 Will Thompson First couple of laps of this grand national event under the floodlights. Craig Driscoll in third, and the pressure from Stuart Hodson in number 25. Kelvin Marshall, we didn't see him last too long in the final before car gremlin struck. He's under fire 
from David Shearing in the 5.64. Matthew McKinstry ahead of them in 7.47. The Northern Irishman Tommy Farrell in 6.67 gets some bumper from Lenson. Hodson going through into second place past the uh, 7.02 of Thompson, but in goes the bumper from one of the red tops already on lap four. James Riggle is up into second place. He's flown up the order in the early stages. There's the world champion, number seven, Gordon Moody. And we have a change of leader into the lead goes James Riggle. National Mini Stock star in 527. The 702 of uh, Thompson nearly gets potted on the turn there. Gordon Moody has already passed about half of the field. He's up with the uh, leading pack now. Mark Smith dropping back in 969. It's James Riggle absolutely flying out in front in 527. He's something of a Skegness specialist in the F2s. 5-4. Lenson gets the bumper in on one of the Fords. That was number four of uh, Martin Ford. Back into the turns, they close down Ben Lockwood in at number 618. Saw him running in front of the leader for most of the final. He's chasing Aaron Bate this time in 184, but it's Regal who leads. Moody now going for second, attacking Stuart Hodgson. We lose the 702 there of Will Thompson. 702, the number used for many years by Shale Racer. Alan Cooper and he's lost his steering there and wallop straight in goes Thompson. Martin Ford spins around in the number four. Riggle out on his own in 5-2-7. He's got uh, Gordon Moody chasing him now. Somebody else spinning ahead of them there. I think that was Arjan van Dam, the uh, Dutchman. Stuart Hodgson in third. Then it's Aaron Bates and Ben Lockwood in 6-1-8. That's your top five. James Riggle out in front, but Moody is starting to hunt him down. He's won more races than I can remember in uh, Brisker F2, including many here at Skegness. One of his favourite uh, tracks on the F2 schedule. He goes all over the country. Gordon Moody, including right down to... Uh, St. Day in Cornwall he's been to recently near Redruth then travelled back uh, up the country to race uh, closer to his home the following day very dedicated driver is uh, Gordon indeed he's chasing down James Riggle Gordon Moody a multiple national points champion he's won two world titles he's up the inside there to take the lead but James Riggle fights back gets the bumper in on uh, the turn, they pass the stranded 702 car, coming through turns three and four. Riggle retakes the lead. Moody in with the bump. We've got a battle on our hands here. This is allowing the next three to close in. And who's this coming up the inside? Aaron Vate in 184. He's going to take second from Moody and attack Riggle. There's been a big rivalry over the years between Aaron Vate and James Riggle in Brisker F2. Riggle holds the lead. Moody's going to put the bumper in on both of them. A cracking finish here with just a couple of laps to go. Moody's going to go from third to first. Aaron Vates will position himself for attack and attack again into the turn. He gets the bumper in on Moody and retakes the lead from the world champion. That's quite a rare sight. Moody back down to second. Rigol is behind in third. They're coming up to start the final lap this time around. Terrific race between these three. Bates, Moody and Rigol and Ben Lockwood wants a piece of this as well in 6-1-8. Mark Schmitz lets them through. They are on the last lap now. Tommy Farrell hoping uh, that uh, he won't get in their way here. Moody getting ready for a last spend lunge on Aaron Bates. The bumper's going to go in into turn three up the inside. They're almost side by side. It's going to be a drag race to the line. Aaron Bates has held it. Great drive by Aaron Bates in uh, 184. An incredible race there. It started off quietly, but uh, an explosive battle there between uh, Aaron Bates, Gordon Moody and James Riggle. Any one of those three could have won it. And Aaron Bates rode out the last spend hit from Gordon Moody. It was overtaken, repassed indeed, twice for the lead in that one. A rare sight indeed. Bait the winner by 0.2 of a second on the drag race to the line. Ahead of the world champion, James Riggle third ahead of Ben Lockwood. Less than a second covering those four. Kay Lenson, the Dutchman, fifth ahead of David Shearing. And Stuart Hodson, Kelvin Marshall, Bradley McKinstry of Northern Ireland and Henry King rounding out the top ten. Great racing from the F2s, now it's on to the Brisker F1 grand national event big grid of 35 cars out there for this one almost encircling the entire track out there on the grid all the big names on the back there's bradley harrison alongside his dad paul in number two Dan johnson luke davidson ben riley in 422 we've not seen much of him he's been uh, embroiled in the battles in the midfield though junior wayne but is there in 515 matt newson lee fairhurst nigel green tom harris Going from the uh, back of the field, final winner, Andrew Batty, Memorial Trophy winner, Kyle Gray. Sam Wass and Callum Oakes-Kitson will lead the field away in this one. Sam Jacklin in the car with the Shale-style wing on it on the second row alongside Scott Wright in the Matt Newson hire car. We're underway then for 16 laps. 
it's not smoke being thrown up, I don't think there. That's a bit of cement dust from uh, an oil spillage in another race. We're underway then with 16 laps for the F1 Grand National already. A few yellow graders crashing out there. Try and identify those in a moment. I think the yellows have come out straight away. The yellow light's still on around the raceway. They've been on since the uh, race started. We are now under caution. The uh, race brought to a halt with those yellow graders crashing out. I thought the yellow lights hadn't gone out at first when we went green flags, but it was a caution called by the steward. This is the uh, reason why. A bit of a pile-up of yellow graders. Martin Spires in the middle of it. He's been in the wars tonight. Mark Wareham and John Fortune. But it was a whole line of contact. Ashley England and uh, George Elwell putting the bumpers in there. Mark Wareham went spinning and everybody else piling in behind. Four cars involved there. 120 Casey Engelston. He's had a few visits to the uh, wall tonight. He's in the middle of that as well. So the track has been cleared. And we are ready for the restart with Sam Wass in the lead in 284. Ahead of Callum Oaks Kitson in 533. Sam Jacklin in 137. 101 Tristan Jackson, the first yellow grader. And then Courtney Witts, Alex Wass, Charlie Sorder. And the rest of them only two laps into this, so uh, your higher graders not yet making their move. We've seen a few low grade successes tonight. And in the end twos as well, of course. We'll be seeing that again here in this Grand National. On board with Ashley England. We get back underway, already getting the bumper in on a few of the yellow tops. Away they go. Starts to settle in. It's going to go past the reflect of the car slowing up at the back. It's the early pace setter. Here's once again Sam Wass in 284. Chris Cowley on the attack there on the back of Elwell in 501. Dan Johnson, the leading superstar in number four, is behind them. We're with him. Sparks flying ahead of us there. Ashley England under fire from Murray Jones in 196. Murray certainly in a hurry in this one. Courtney Wicks dropping back in at 180. Last leads it, Tristan Jackson on the attack, though he's already had a heat win tonight, he wants a Grand National win as well up the inside, down the back straight, he takes the lead, and of Sam Watts, Jackson to the front, then the tarmac specialist in 101, Oaks Kinson third, then Alex Watts, Murray Jones bouncing off the wall there, just in front of the starters rostrum, meantime the superstar graders battling further back, Courtney Wins spins out on uh, turn two, in her chances of a second win. Leaders coming up to lap Scott Wright in the car hired from Matt Newson. There's a chicane in the middle of the turn there caused by Courtney Witt's stranded car. They go either side of the 180. 533 Oaks Kitson dropping back now and the yellow flag is coming out again. No doubt for the stranded car of Courtney Witt. She can't get it restarted. A bit of a traffic jam there on the home straights. Looks like Courtney just uh, spun herself out there. May have been under attack from Matt Newson in the number 16, but I don't think there was any contact being clipped by Paul Harrison as well. And Courtney Witt's out of the race. The leader is Tristan Jackson ahead of Sam Wass. Then we've got Charlie Sorder up to third in number five. Alex Wass in fourth, the older of the two brothers. And Callum Oaks Kitson, Charlie England, Ashley England rather. Charlie races in the F2s, apologies there. Murray Jones, Dan Johnson, Lee Fairhurst is next. We're on board with Lee in 217. the uh, new uh, bar here at Skegness on the right there. Great to see so many improvements being made by uh, Rob Speak and his team here at Skegness Raceway. I'm sure there'll be plenty of partying in that bar after the meeting tonight. Not for the drivers of course, they have a second meeting coming up tomorrow. The UK Open Championship. It's steady on this uh, rolling lap. One or two cars, quite a few cars in fact out of the race on the centre. It's a big 35 car grid. Now start to rise, and away we go with Tristan Jackson in the lead in 101. Now towards the first turn, Charlie Sorder has got through in the second, and Alex Wass passes his brother up into third place. Charlie Sorder will now attack for the lead. Dad Mick has won here a number of times in F1 and F2. And uh, Dick Sorder was also a Formula One stock car driver as uh, Charlie Sorder got the bumper in there on Jackson, fired him wide. Didn't lead for very long though because Alex Wass goes up the inside. He takes the lead. Ashley England's going to try and pass both of them. We're on bumper camp on Ashley England's car as he chases down. Charlie Sorder will get the bumper in. I'll try and fire him into the back of Alex Wass. He does so. Good move, Ashley England. He takes the lead. In car 346, the blue grader. Sorder fights back and now right with him is Dan Johnson. We've had a couple of cars crash out in the background. Sean Webster in 48 is one of them. But England leads it. Johnson in second place. Trying to get the bumper in there. 
as they go into the back straights. Now goes to the inside, the uh, orange machine squeezes up the inside of the blue, number 346 of Ashley England, he takes the lead, Dan Johnson in number four, Lee Fairhurst not far behind in 217, he's going to go into second place. Off the turn they come, Tom Harris up there as well, the superstar train has caught up with the lower graders and overhauled them, we've lost Phoebe Wademan there in 2-1-1, maybe it was her who tangled with Sean Webster, we've also lost Scott Wright onto the infield in 254. But it's Dan Johnson who shows in front, ahead of Lee Fairhurst now in second. England under fire from Tom Harris, he goes through in the third place. Behind them, Nigel Breed in 4-4-5. All the time, of course, Kyle Gray trying to progress up the order from the back of the grid after winning the final. Somebody pulling off there, I think that's uh, Aaron Leach, it is, in the number 70. We lose another car to the infield. It's Dan Johnson who leads them with uh, some four laps to go in this Grand National. Last race of the night at Skegness Raceway. Side there, two of the Blue Raiders, Murray Jones, relegates Ashley England in another place. 4 4 5. Nigel Green attacks Tom Harris for third. Still, your leader is Dan Johnson, chased by the man we ride with, Lee Fairhurst. And he catch Johnson and steal a win. It's been a relatively quiet night for Lee Fairhurst. Johnson been in the uh, thick of the battles as always, as well, in the orange MBS sponsored car to start his final lap this time Tom Harris under fire from Nigel Green for third place we're going to see a last lap lunge from Nigel for a top three position looks like Dan Johnson has done it up I don't think Lee Fairs is going to catch him Pete Sargent pulling up there on the back straight as Johnson round the final turn in goes the bumper from Nigel Green on the back of Tom Harris to try and snatch third place as Johnson wins it Fairhurst second I think Green just pipped Harris the third place there and it looks like Charlie Sorder rounded out the top five for the rest of the places in just a moment in our Grand National no doubt about your winner though the man from Nottinghamshire Dan Johnson in car number four this time the superstars were able to catch the lower graders ahead of them in our Grand National events on a very large grid of 35 cars Johnson taking the win ahead of Lee Fairhurst with Nigel Green just out dragging Tom Harris by a few hundredths of a second to take third position. Fifth for Charlie Sorder ahead of Murray Jones, then Ashley England in seventh ahead of Danny Wayman, Chris Cowley and Matt Newsom. Rounding out the top ten, Kyle Gray made it up to twelfth from the back. Number four, Dan Johnson, Grand National winner on what must have been a bit of a special night for you. Yeah, it's a special night for a lot of people. Um, it ran through Batty's uh, Memorial race um, for the final and there were a lot of money up for grabs and naturally winning that first time, get your ne the name first time on the Memorial Trophy, everyone wanted to do. Um, so yeah, real special night, especially for our, our family and a lot of close family of Batties that we were very, we, we, we just were, we've had a rough four year with him, we've had up and, up and downs, but he just loved racing, that's why. Rob Speak tonight um, and Asha Speak they've put a fantastic meeting on for him um, orange flags and all different stuff that's just meant a lot to a lot of the drivers that knew Andrew very well and that is a nice thing about the stock car community is like even the people that didn't know him knew of him and they all come together at times like this yeah and like everyone took it on upon upon themselves to paint all the bumpers orange and there was probably one or two that didn't paint the bumpers um, and everyone else well you've just got to say thank you ever so much for them for painting the bumpers and it's it's not a two minute job but by the time you've got the paint and mixed it and then painted the bumpers and that so I know a lot of people are busy as well I just thank them for putting a great show on as well tonight for the big race and it were a cracking race so yeah really happy yeah the meeting in general has been a good night tonight Skegness usually is under the lights but the Grand National itself that car was quick yeah we, I struggle around Skegness I'll be honest uh, it's not my favourite is tarmac track um, but when I get it right it, it is a, a little it is a flying little thing but I don't, I don't know I just hot and cold here but <laughs> Tonight, I think we've found a little bit of something and it just seems to be good, so we'll, we'll see for tomorrow. And of course now it's a nice early night, no drinking, yeah. good night's sleep, ready for tomorrow. Yeah, I don't drink, um, I used to, but now I've got two kids and to be fair, I enjoy being with them more than getting drunk and that and spending quality time with them, like, so yeah, I'm not, I do have a few beers, but not when I'm racing and tomorrow I need a clear, a clear head ahead of me. Oh, well, good luck and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, thank you. 
Let's take a look at the World Championship qualifying points. Good results for Dan Johnson, moving him up to third place ahead of uh, Will Hunter. So the Wayman boy is still at the top. Frankie Wayman Jr. ahead of Danny by a considerable margin. Lee Fairhurst rounding out the top five. Fairly close behind with Matt Newson. Frankie Wayman Jr. Jr. next in the order. A long way to go yet until Kings Lynn in September. That just about wraps up the action from day one here at Skegness. The barbecue is now being lit and it's party night here in Lincolnshire. Day two coming up the UK Open Championship in our next programme. So be sure not to miss that. Tonight's programme is dedicated to the memory of Andrew Batty, Bill's sister, his family and many friends. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.